I know what you're thinking. You've been making tables for ages and you do an okay job at it, so you don't need anything. Well, if I watched this video in the first five years of my career in accounting, I would have learned loads of things that would have saved me time and errors when people are doing it later on and also make it easier for people to enter data without making mistakes. My name is David Van Eyman. I have plenty of videos on my channel weekly on Excel, PowerPoint, Power BI, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using an application at your workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel. So click the subscribe button if you want to see more awesome videos. Okay, so here I have a good table on the right and a bad one on the left. And I'm going to explain why this is good and how to get it to that way. So avoid merge cells. They cause a lot of problems when you do like filters or formulas. For example, February, if I filter it, that's only one. If I unfilter it, I see it's supposed to be three. If you have anything in your table, um, have some blanks around it. So between everything. Otherwise, when you press control A, it selects the wrong thing. When you add some filters with your shortcuts, it goes to the top. It doesn't really work slickly because Excel thinks that the table goes right up here and goes all the way this way. So insert blank rows completely around your table. Um, try to avoid hiding because people can't always tell that data is hidden. And formatting, make it nice like this. And I'm going to show you how in a few clicks you can go from something like this, which is broken, muddled up format, to something that's much cleaner like this. Make sure that people don't e enter things in error. So make sure people don't type over formulas. Make sure people don't type text where numbers should be there. These are all possible and should be done whenever you set up the right data format. So let's start with avoiding hiding. So I'm going to select them and choose to unhide. What I like to do is select these and go to the data tab and then choose to group it. And grouping allows you to expand or collapse it like that, or like this. Also allows you to have multiple grouping layers. So you can have level one for minimum, level two for medium, level three for maximum, like that. You can do them on rows as well. But generally try to unmerge the cells. So in fact, I'm going to select all of this and go to let's maximize that. Unmerge the cells. This is something I always do and unhide. And make sure that these fill down. It is just a formula. So I'm going to fill it down like that. And then I'm going to, uh, well, I'm just going to remove this. So select it. And a lot of people don't know this, but you can go to clear and clear all. And here I'm going to just insert one. I can also do clear format. really good for that. So if I go to the home tab, I'm going to format as a table. These are really, really great features that allow you to have entirely table-wide formats. You can choose the style that you want and it will format the entire table rather than just one row. I'm gonna undo that and show you an even quicker way. If you have your broken formats like this, go to format as table and just right click on one that you like and apply and clear formatting. Press okay, keeps your dates in the right way and removes all the other formatting around. So you also have other options, so you can choose the design that you want. A lot like the way Word and PowerPoint does tables, this is essentially the same thing. And you can even untick banded rows, for example, and take it like that, or banded columns, etc., etc. So a lot of features you can do there. Also, if you um, scroll down, it's got like a freeze panes-like feature. So right now I have freeze panes on, but if I turn them off, then as I go down, I can see that I have the name of the column instead of the reference A, B, C, D, E, etc. You can only see this if you have the headers that are out of view and you click inside the table. Click outside, it goes away. And if I can see them, then even clicking inside, it doesn't happen. Uh, that doesn't freeze the first columns, so you still need to do those manually using the freeze panes feature. Some more great features about tables if you add in a calculation column, you get the new column auto expansion. So it does this. If you don't want it to bring those formats, you can press undo, but I'm going to keep it that way. I'm going to say equals this one times this one. And it will fill down all the way. Obviously it has an error there, but let's just change that number here. And now we see that it works. So it fills it down. Again, if you don't want that to happen, you can press undo. However, it 
is going to make that easier for you. The other awesome thing about it is the formula actually references the names of the column, Bristol sales times price. Now, this is dynamic, so if I change this into, for example, Brist, then this will now refer to Brist. So it's dynamic based on what that is. I love this feature, and I think it's really something that everyone should be using. And again, if I go new, I can undo Control Z, or I'm gonna keep it that way. So we've done that. Next, we're going to decide on uh, rules for each column. So I'm going to unhide, and then we've got another date setting. I'm just going to do Control Shift 3 or Control Shift Hash. That's the best way to get shortcuts. I like three letters for months. That way you don't get confused whether you're viewing things in US or European style date formats. So once I've got that, what I tend to do is I will take the header column and I will copy them. And then I'll go somewhere else. Let's do this in a new page. And I'll paste special, but I'll choose transpose. This is what it does. And then here, this is column name. Then here I have uh, data type and restriction. Any notes on these? So deadlines, this is actually a formula. So block like that. Um, date, this is say after 2019. Uh, restrictions are gonna be there. No, let's say date. Comments, this is going to be uh, text and free type and product and keep going like this like these items this is going to be uh, say drop down list it's going to be in restrictions and it's going to be uh, text as well and keep going like that and then we're going to actually make our drop down list so to do that um, a few ways to do it if you already have your data you can select it go to copy and then you can paste, but then you can choose data and remove duplicates and just get those. Notice juice is there because so, it's misspelled. Uh, and then here we can say, okay, item, uh, beer. So one of them, it, it's not removed it because it was in the header, that's right. So I'm going to take this. I don't want the misspelled juice. So I'm going to just put it there. I find it's always better to sort them alphabetically. Another way to do it, if you have Office 365, is to do equal sort unique, and then it will just give you the unique versions of each one. Close your bracket twice, like that. Then you might wanna remove these ones, or copy and paste them into values, and then remove the ones that you don't need. So. Once we've got the item names, what we can do is we can click on here and we can choose data and data validation. I have other videos on data validation. This is, as I said, a fantastic tool. And I'm going to allocate it there. All right, now I have the employee one. Notice that the formatting isn't great. Um, what you can do is before you apply it to this, you can actually make it an ever expanding list. So if I click on this, and I'm going to shortcut the table feature. If I go to the Home tab and choose Format as Table, choose one that I like, right-click it, and Apply and Clear Formatting. Press OK. That will do what it says, <laughs> which is pretty great. Then if I go here and I select Data Validation, and now if I reference a list which is here, it will refer to these items so people can choose them. But more importantly, if I add in a new person, Xander, then I can see that that name automatically comes here. This is a new feature that just came about quite recently, actually, for Office 365. So really good, but keep going as you have numbers and things. So. Dates and numbers should also have data validation. Numbers should be, for example, a whole number greater than zero. Even if you think, well, it's obviously gonna be a number, just force them to enter the right thing. That way they won't get it wrong. Here again, dates, 
and a date that's greater than, say, 1st of Jan 2017, like that. Now, once you've gotten it the way that you want, you can still fix old issues by going to the drop down of data validation and choosing circle invalid data. Here it's given me the juice issue and I can either click on here to fix it, then I might need to press enter. And then we see that all my formulas are now fixed. Again, we can rearrange things. So if something is in a proper table format, then it's easier to arrange. As I said, I like seeing the formulas at the beginning and at the end. So I'm going to put them there because people like to just enter things without having to stop and think, is this a formula or something else? So all my formulas are over here. Uh, this is a formula that I want to overwrite. So I'm going to drag it down like that. And here I've got a formula. This is on the left. This can sometimes be okay, particularly if you're freezing panes and you want to make sure that the person is able to see a couple of columns, including one formula one, then it's good to have formulas on the left, but never have them in the middle. So freeze panes, you can click on, for example, uh, say you wanna freeze up to here, click on here and choose data, view, freeze panes and freeze panes, and then it will freeze A and B like that. Uh, you can also choose a specific cell if you want to freeze the row and the column. However, if you're using a table, then you will always see the headers and you don't necessarily have to freeze them vertically. Loads of other benefits of a table. For example, you can also add a total row manually and then just sort of choose from the drop down list what you want and drag that across. This can be really nice where you've got like numerical stuff that you've wanted to do. And if you have equals sum of a range, it will reference the whole column that's called sales in table five. You can rename table five if you want, but this is a much ro more robust way to do it if it accidentally grows. So if I want to remove the total row and then I add new numbers, you can see that this is growing and I can very easily just add back my total row uh, when I'm ready to just see the totals again. You have ways to resize it, convert it to a range, just convert it back to not having the table special features, but it's a fantastic tool. I really, really highly recommend it. Another thing that I do is I will give column instructions for each column. So as I had here, I will choose formula, choose date, etc., etc. So I'm going to write here, formula, choose date, and now I'm going to color code them like I've done in the other one, but rather than manually doing it, I've done it so that every time the word choose comes out, it automatically changes it to a yellow color. So conditional formatting, one of the most underused things, select this, go to highlight cell rules, text that contains, by far the best thing about conditional formatting, Formula is going to be red and then choose is going to be yellow. Notice how I, I have choose number, choose date or choose. But the point is that anytime there is any validation, it is in yellow. And then free type will be in green. Perfect. And now they are dynamic. So if this changes to free type, the color changes as well which is perfect. Love conditional formatting. There's so much more that it can do, but that is just an idea. So for the next one, I have to actually remove my total row. And what I'm gonna next do is select every cell in my worksheet with formulas, and then we're going to lock them. So I'm gonna go find and select, go to special and choose formulas. Love go to special, really good for um, analyzing data like data validation and conditional formatting that's broken as well as formulas versus constants. But now I've selected every cell with formulas. Notice this one, for example, also is selected, so they're not necessarily adjacent. And then I'm gonna to go to data and data validation. And this is a hack. <laughs> I'm gonna choose a decimal equal to 67.512942. And you'll see why soon. 
and then error alert, I can actually put in a custom error message. So don't write over formulas. You'll get fired if you continue. You can write anything you want here. <laughs> so then if someone tries to type over that, they get this. Now, why did I choose that number? It means it's kind of like setting a password. So if I go back here, and if the person types exactly this number into one of those cells, it will work. But if they type in absolutely anything else, it will give them that error. And I personally find that better than the way that Excel does uh, protect sheet. I find it quite tricky to use, whereas this method I find a lot better. Bad raw data could be multiple tabs, January, February, March, April. This makes it very, very difficult to keep track of things and keep everything in line. If you add one column to one sheet, you have to remember to do it to all of them. It's impossible to analyze them together or very, very difficult to and avoid repeated column names like this. So you have males, kids, adults, total, females, kids, adults, total. This is just going to cause you issues. It's much better to have gender in the rows. So males, females, kids, adults, total. Um, that way pivot tables and other features can work a lot better. With this, it becomes quite difficult to ascertain, well, how many kids in total, regardless of gender. So try to avoid that and set it up in the right way. What's the better way to set it up? Try to have values of one type in the same column, one row for headers, unique header names, as I showed you in the last examples, avoid blanks inside the table, but blanks use them strategically around the tables, avoid merge cells, as I showed you, and subtotals can be an issue as well when you need to do analysis, because there's a lot of double counting that leads to errors, and some features like pivot tables really don't work well with them. So if you like this video, then I have plenty more on my channel. My name is David Van Eyem, and check out my other awesome videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Power BI, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. I release a video every week approximately, so check out more of my stuff. Thanks for watching.